just to give a brief, you know, introduction. So, first of all, uh, welcome everybody. So, we have another expert talk, our monthly expert talks. We have that every month. And I'm really excited because, you see, I'm trying to find experts now far away from Europe. So, we have uh, experts uh, from lately. And I'm very happy because we are going to learn more about the out of feed and learn community. And I came across uh, to that community from a friend of mine, a colleague of mine, Kiriaki, who is working in a kindergarten school in Greece. So she's uh, working uh, with them and she had invited Sarah Seya to uh, do some things together. So I met Sarah there, but unfortunately, She's a project coordinator of Out of Eden Unfortunately, she had some personal problems and she couldn't join. But I really want to thank uh, Liz, Liz uh, um, Dow, Dow, sorry, it's a little bit yeah. difficult. Yeah, okay. I hope, okay. And, and she is going to do that for us, and I'm very glad. So, the information is a research associate and principal investigator in uh, Project Zero in Harvard, uh, Graduate School of Education, and she co-directs how to feed and learn. So I told you it's an online learning community, and they follow the steps of uh, this journalist, Paul Schalpeck. Uh, but I think that she will uh, you better all these things, all this journey and what they are doing there. So thank you once again, Liz, for organizing that for us, and for yours. Thank you. And honestly, it is such a pleasure to, to be here. I, I had a little look at the E Twinning website and was really impressed by by the work that's going on and and educators' willingness to connect with one another um, across um, country lines. Um, I'm going to very quickly um, switch over to my slideshow. Um, so this will be the last you see of me, my face. Um, so let me just do that. Right. Um, so I'm hoping are you can, see, can people see my slideshow now? You can see that, so I suppose we can all see that. Is that okay? Can you all see that? Oh, I'm getting a yes, so I'm going to carry on. So, um, I Need and Learn is um, a project that's based at um, Project Zero, um, which is a research organization that's based at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. And I know that the people who are on this webinar are familiar with that work. Uh, Project Zero is actually coming up for its 50th anniversary next year. Um, so it's been around for a long time. And I think it's particularly associated with the work of Howard Gardner and David Perkins. Um, the work that I'm sharing with you now, out of Eden Learn, it kind of builds on decades of work at Project Zero. It didn't just come out of, of thin air. And I want to give a shout out to the Abundance Foundation, whose logo is at the top, um, because they are very generous supporters of the work that we do. Um, for reason, um, so I wanted to start actually on a personal note. So as you might have guessed from my accent, I, I'm based in the U.S., but I'm not from the U.S. And I had my own e pre-internet uh, when I was growing up in the UK in the 1980s. And I, I grew up in a, I went to school actually in a small town called Utoxeta in Staffordshire. And a really pivotal moment for me was a French exchange program where I sent letters back and forth to Karine, my, my French pen friend in, in France. And then I had to stay with her on uh, her family's farm in Chalou in Autopia. And she came back and, and spent two weeks with my family. I mean, it was a very traditional of this, of the um, pen friend um, and exchange tradition. And that happens. My French pen friend, Corinne, is going to come and stay with me this summer with her boys, who I've never met. Um, children, too, that she's never met. And we touch up a friendship over the years. Which has really meant a lot to me. Um, in fact, I was so impressed by my visit to France. I went on to study French at university. I think the work that I went out to read and learn, if you were to trace it back, is actually connected to that experience. And from 
much I gained from being immersed in a different culture. So that's kind of some background that I bring to it. I was thinking, well, European twinning and beyond, so not just um, your platform, what does that mean in the decade in which we live now? And things have really somewhat changed since the 1980s when we didn't have the internet and we weren't able to connect with one another in that way. Uh, and I think in many ways, of course, it's become so much easier to, to collaborate and connect with one another. But I think there are also some new challenges, um, and some of the challenges um, are ones that we're seeking to address on our surveys and learn. Um, I think the work that eTwinning is doing is really essential, and I'm actually bizarrely going to quote myself here, um, and this is something that we're writing for our surveys and learn, but I wanted to share this quote that um, and captures how we're, why we think it's important to help young people to connect with one another. So I, this is something we've been whoops, whoops, hang on, I'm good, uh, sharing around. So preparing our youth to engage in respectful, thoughtful, and insightful cross-cultural exchange is just the right thing to do. It's essential for preparing them for the complex for the complex, globalized world in which they will live, and enabling them to work together to with kinds of collective challenges, such as environmental degradation, public health crises, rising extremism, and the like, that increasingly defy national or cultural boundaries. The work of eTwinnings, where you're collaborating across borders, the work we're doing, now more than ever, is really, really important. So I just wanted to start with that to frame what I'm going to say today. I'm going to structure today's session. Um, I am going to start by introducing the Art of Eden Walk, which is one journalist's walk around the world. I'm going to um, give you an overview of what Out of Eden Learn is, um, and I'm going to share um, how the platform works. We try and be interactive, and we're going to try out an activity together that's taken from our curriculum. I'm going to share our dialogue toolkit, which is part and parcel of our curriculum, but which I think has taken on a life of its own. I'll try out something there. I'd really like to focus on what, what can you take away from this? What could you do in your classroom? And um, hopefully leave plenty of time for some Q&A and dialogue. Without more of an ado, um, let me introduce you to the Out of Eden Walk. Um, on the cover of the National Geographic magazine you see there is Paul Salapek. He's an experienced journalist um, and former foreign correspondent who has taken it upon himself um, to do the crazy task of walking literally around the world. Um, right now, um, we're actually in Kazakhstan, although the reporting because of the delay is coming from Azerbaijan right now. Um, and hopefully, in probably five to six years' time, he'll complete his walk at the southernmost tip of um, South America, Tierra del Fuego. And he started the walk in January 2012 um, from Ethiopia. Um, you'll see his route here on this map. Uh, but I thought I'm going to show you a two or three minute video, but I think it would be good for you to hear the voice of Paul and let him explain in his own words why he's doing um, this walk. So this video link will work. Here we are. My is Paul Shalopek. I'm a just a National Geographic fellow, and I welcome you to this workshop based on the Arvid Moan project, a continuous seven-year-long foot journey across the world that follows the pathways of the first humans just out of Africa back in the Stone Age. This is about journalism, about storytelling, but it's guided by science. In the fossil record of genetics is guideposts for a global one route that stretches from Ethiopia and Africa, across Eurasia, and then to North America, and down to Tierra del Fuego at the southern tip of South America. The corner of the continents to be colonized by our species ago. The Eden Walk is about slowing down. It's about closely thinking before something naturally in our accelerating, digitally driven news cycle. The main tools of what I'm calling slow journalism. The foot forced to slow down my information gathering process. Well, 
stories of human conflict or, or cultural endurance or global health crises, mass migrations, or stories that reveal how the deep past always informs our daily headlines. If you used to learn this. as anyone, but the wall taught me to channel this impulse. It required I actually stop multitasking and focus on the immediate physical and human environment at hand. In a moment, taking a walk across um um, produced that video for a workshop for young journalists, but I think it gives a very succinct um, overview of why he's taking the walk. Um, and pick up on some of the themes that he mentioned in a moment. I don't want to. Primary graphic. Um, some of his stories are in the print editions um, that you can see, but many of his shorter dispatches appear regularly online. I encourage you to, to look at his writing, which is really very beautiful and very poetic. Um, for our students, we've annotated some of them because the writing is for adults. We've annotated some with definitions and cultural explanations to make them more accessible. One aspect of his book that I think is quite accessible is this concept of milestones, which is every 100 um, miles, he stops to pause. And I'm demonstrating, this is the latest one, which has just been posted. He took a panoramic shot of where he's at. Um, the 32nd one, so there's a whole string of these. He interviews the nearest um, queuing that he encounters. In this case, it was a taxi driver who happened to be um, coming through at that time. He always asks, who are you? Where do you come from? Or are you going? And over the course of the journey, people answer those questions in very different ways. Some are neutral and some are very, um, you know, where are they going with their life? He takes it over the ground. There is his feet. The sight, in this case, very blue. Um, he takes a short video. Uh, which I won't play now, but it's, it epitomizes the walk and this idea of really slowing down and paying attention to detail. And for those of you who teach um, older students, um, we've got some collaborators um, called Midam who take a snapshot of the Twitter activity in the surrounding area and give um, a sort of curated sample of what people are tweeting about in that part of the world. That's a really fascinating um, feature. There's a fantastic map room where you can see um, how far Paul has, has come, um, which is here. I think I'm jumping a bit too much here. Here we are. You can guess where he has been so far. There's the red line um, where he is right now. So, fantastic resources that I think um, many of you, even if you're you don't ultimately um, want to do something without a vision and learn, um, you might find very interesting. The vision and learn is designed to accompany Paul's walk. I would like to emphasize that it's such a collaboration where Project Zero had, um, I think, significant ideas about education, and we had great alignment when we met with Paul Salopek and found ways to, to create synergy between what Paul is doing and, and what we want to do as educators. Um, so it's more than us just creating a curriculum to go with Paul's walk. And this um, platform that we have created, working young people and educators to do several things, which I think you'll find evidence with how Paul talked about his journalism. So the big thing that we're trying to do is to encourage Young people and their teachers slow down um, in this crazy, fast-paced, information overloaded world. And we found that young people are extremely receptive to the invitation to really take it easy, to stop and to look at the world. Um, listening is a very big piece too, listening to each other, 
but also link to other people who live in their communities. And I think this is very important if we go back to um, one of the very first slides I showed. If we want people to have meaningful encounters with people who are different to them, it's very, very important that they take the time to do so in a thoughtful way. We've um, set up a platform so that young people can really exchange their own stories and perspectives. We hope they find out more about their own story and perspective by being able to compare it to others, but also are exposed to many different kinds of stories and perspectives. Through journalism, through the activities that we have them do, um, from, from the ways in which they go out into their communities. The third big one. Um, and something that, I'm, as a former history teacher, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, is to create ways for young people to see a bit beyond their own every day, to think, how does my life that I'm living now fit into a bigger unfolding story and things that are happening in other parts of the world, but of things that have happened over time, to my life connected to other people's lives. And, and as you saw from the video, is retracing the migratory pathways of our ancient human ancestors and history in many different layers, which is into his storytelling and journalism. Uh, and we try, through some of our activities anyway, to encourage young people to make connections between themselves and the past. In a nutshell, um, to show you how it works, and it's actually quite similar to e-twinning, um, is people sign up on our platform and then we arrange small groups, um, not just pairs, it's always groups of five or six classrooms to build up diversity. Um, we match similarly aged classrooms together. Um, so kindergartners would be with other kindergartners, middle schoolers with other middle schoolers, and high schoolers with high schoolers, for example. But after that, we do everything we can to make the walking parties, as we call them, um, as diverse as possible. So we match people in different parts of the world, and as, well as, as well as people from different socio backgrounds, urban schools, so that people will be exposed to as many different perspectives as possible. And um, I think it's very important because although we're living in an age of connectivity, these studies have shown um, that not just young people but adults as well, we tend to group with people who are very similar to ourselves. So our Facebook friends, for example, if we have a Facebook account, um, they, people tend to have similar outlooks on life and interests and, and so it's actually quite rare for people to be put in touch with people who are really quite different to themselves. I'll also say that a classroom can be as many as one person in a homeschool situation and can be as many as, say, 40 um, in, in, in countries where class sizes are typically quite big. Pictures of the varied learning context um, that we, we, um, that we choose. Um, I'll give a shout to Pariah Scree here uh, because there we've got some educators from now, um, on this session now. Um, it's really very, very exciting for us um, to have participants take anyway from 50 different countries from around the world in very different settings. Okay. At this point, you're going to, are you going to um, not hear me talking, and you're going to actually hear Shea, who, who was initially scheduled um, to do this talk. She's created a very informal video that takes you behind the scenes and shows you how our platform works. It's about three minutes, but I think it would be helpful for you to get a sense of what do we mean by the platform and, and how do things work. Let's see if this video works. In the video, I'll take a few minutes to lead you through our platform. The homepage looks like if you are not logged in as a user. Great resources are accessible from here without registering an account with us. We have information about our project, including student work galleries and reflections, a link to our blog, to our curriculum, community guidelines, and other tools like our dialogue toolkit, our forum for educators, and our monthly feature. I won't go into too much detail about these. 
it for now, as the purpose of this video is to explore our platform from a user's perspective. Students click to register. Before students click to register, enters where someone who already has an account would log in. As learn is free for all participants. Now let's take a moment to walk in the virtual shoes of an educator on our platform. One, the educator's avatar would appear next to their name here in the right-hand corner. Hovering over the avatar, you'll see several options, the most important being Dashboard. The Dashboard offers access points to all the password-protected components of our platform. Each educator can view their class rosters, connect with other educators in their walking parties, which we call our groups of learners, and access their walking party or parties. Each walking party consists of 100 to 200 students. By clicking the launch button, I take into the home page of the walking party. Here you can see the waypoints on the map indicate the cities and countries in which this walking party's participating classes are located. Here we have classes from the U.S., as well as classes from Chennai, India, Abu Dhabi, and Singapore. You can see Paul's walking trail accompanied by to his National Geographic dispatches. Students and educators can easily access Paul's writing. We have annotated several dispatches to make Paul's writing more accessible for younger audiences. On the right side of the screen, you can see Paul's latest dispatch appear here, as well as the most recent post made by students in the walking party. On the left of the screen, you see our curriculum instructions, which are broken down into six footsteps or activities. In case, you're looking at the first core learning journey that classes take. As you can easily navigate the footstep posts by clicking and scrolling down the page. We offer two tips for each footstep to help educators make the most out of our curriculum. Footstep has three parts. In Paul's journey, which is a way for students to explore and interact with Paul's out of Eden walk. Activity, which is really the main part of each footstep, where students are asked to do something. For example, to walk in your neighborhood, or to meet the everyday. Finally, interact with your walking partners. We invite students to engage in dialogue by both commenting on other posts and responding to any comments on their own posts. We invite to use our dialogue toolkit and we provide props and suggestions on specific tools students can use to help them engage in thoughtful, authentic dialogue. Educate access student work by each student's individual username. If we back to the dashboard, click class roster, a list of the students' names will appear. Click the students' names and you'll see an activity feed that lists all their activities on our platform, starting with their most recent actions at the top. This is a way for educators to monitor their students' posts and progress. Take a moment to explore the platform from a student's perspective. Hover over the avatar. Rather than dashboard, you'll see the option home base. Click this takes the student to their own page where they can access their post to their activity feed and their profile and go to their walking party homepage. When they submit their work for a footstep, they just click on the bright blue post button and begin crafting their post. To add images, embed video, and insert hyperlinks into their post. They also have the option to go back anytime and edit a post they've already submitted. This is the of the Out of Eden Learn platform. Thank you. virtual walk with us. It was a bit of a whirlwind, but I think it will have given you an overview of how our platform works. And we have seen that it somewhat resembles social media. Um, I'll give um, a shout out at the moment to say that if your students are under the age of 10, it will be the teacher who posts on behalf of the students. So I just want to make that clear. That, that video was aimed as if you have middle or high school students who have their own account. Um, to say a little bit about our curriculum. Now, our curriculum is completely free. Um, you can download it from our website under the curriculum tab. So at the end of, of this um, slide. Um, and we have heard that people have take activities and adapted them for in-classroom use. So you can do that regardless of, um, of whether or not you're signed up to fully participate in our community. This learning journey, which is our kind of our core, core learning, um, we're inviting young people to think, these, um, as it were, like Paul Salapek, in that we invite them to slow down, to go out into their neighborhoods, to take photographs, to interview people, and think about the culture that surrounds them in the everyday. 
journey, which uh, we currently have quite a lot of people embarked on now, this is where more of the history and connection making comes in. And our activities invite young people to think about themselves and the past, to interview somebody from an older generation, and to look in their neighborhoods to see traces of globalization and the ways in which what's happening in one small place could be echoed in many other places. To break things up, I would like now for us to dive a bit deep and see what one of our activities would look like. So the free um, curriculum, it's printed. When you're in the platform, to try and make our materials more accessible to people, um, yeah, has created some videos that can animate our instructions and so provide examples of student work. So I should play one of those. Um, it's a way you to see what some of our activities are like, um, a way to see student work and set you up for something that you're about to do after this um, as an activity. Here's another Okay. Um, for some reason, it's locked me out. Activity portion of footstep three, King Neighborhood Walk. Now do a walk of your own, though one is a lot shorter than the call. So that they are surprised by what they notice when they slow down to look with fresh eyes at where they live. A neighborhood or local area. It may include places on your sketch map. You can help or with a mate, friend, or family member. A neighborhood or local area. Take those of things that catch your attention. What do you need? Feel, hear, taste, or smell? Trust in the people who live or work there with fresh eyes. Here are ideas for different kinds of photos you can take. Photo whole neighborhood scenes. And for, zoom in on a detail you find interesting. Pushing the camera up and photo where you're pointing the camera toward the ground. Photo or familiar in your neighborhood. And things that might be unexpected or surprising. Photo that you share. Photo you took on your walk. Tell us why you took these two photos and why you chose to post them. What are the photos you took? What are people in your walking party to notice or understand about them? How did taking a walk and taking these photos make you think in new or different ways about your neighborhood or local area? Enjoy. Now say that we have some truly beautiful student work. Um, I invite you to um, explore our Instagram, where we um, regularly post student work. But well, I thought it would be good for us to practice some slow looking of our own. And you may recognize this photograph from the video you just um, saw. It is actually one of my favorites, I have to admit. And the student also took this picture, I believe all of you also saw at the barbershop. This is a student from, from Mumbai. Um, I want to say I'm seeing some interesting um, comments flashing by, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm just plowing ahead because it's a bit too much for me to process um, in terms of responding. Um, but this is your chance now, and I know that Irene is going to help me um, moderate this. So what you need to do is to look very carefully at the picture. I give you actually. Um, a minute to look at it, to really look closely at what's going on in it. You might want to also look at the very brief accompanying statement. We usually encourage longer stories, but for our purposes here today, I, I think that this is good. In um, a pro-zero thinking routine, it's familiar to some of you, but I don't want to assume that all of you know um, about thinking routines. Just take a minute now. And look carefully at the picture. What do you notice about it? What questions do you have? And anything in that you can connect to that reminds you of your own experience. 
forward and then um, with from you. And, and at that point, um, I really want to manage it, but it'd be great to hear some voices. Okay. Um, so, Irene, if you can help me here, because I, I don't want to get out of my um, screen here where I'm showing the picture. Okay. I'm just, uh, yeah. I'm so it reminds me of my youth. I'm just asking them if we used to play the street with friends. Now, no, can now only we can see cars. Women, only men. I want you know to describe or say something. You can just raise your hand and I can unmute you. So don't be afraid or don't be shy to do that. Can I say, Irene, it'd be really good if we just start with things that people notice in the picture. So we'll start with what do people see in the picture. So if people could just stick to that for the minute to get the full um, power of this activity, that would be great. Okay. So you were there, right? Um, maybe you could do that. Is that might be quicker, yeah. So do you want to do that? Two things yeah. you want to see. I used to play outside with my friends. Looks like they have time to play. My childhood, happy one. We used to play a lot. Cannot see women, no kids. I playing in what seems to be a road. Young men playing together. I see a small white ball. There are boys playing in the streets. In our streets, boys play football in the streets in summer. This is a bit run down. It seems to be a break from work. I play with my friends, so no much free time. Some of them are barefoot. It's not football. Some is approaching. Simple game, rough equipment. The car parks on the, are parked on the road. Wow, just think nice mood. Run down, but the car seem quite modern and new. The children mixed with men. A poor neighborhood judging from the houses. Picking. Still full of cars. Um, maybe I'd invite people now um, to think about what questions they have about the picture? What questions in their mind? Um, a few, uh, just for some background on this thinking routine, um, what we should encourage careful looking is get people to really, we jump interpretation initially, but to really try and look carefully at what they see. And there were some great things that people had. When we first looked at this, it wasn't until somebody else pointed out that little white ball bang in the middle of the picture that I even saw it was that, for example. And then if we move now to thinking about what questions do we have about it. So if maybe we could type their questions and Irene could um, read some questions that people have or what about the photograph. Some interesting questions come in about like what what season is it? Is it an industrial area? Much to I think at least I can get into it. Yeah, now I've lost my thing now. Uh, okay, okay, can you hear me now? I can hear. You. Okay, that happen often. Do we do it every day? Is it a street case on the front? Front, people, they live in the 
competition? Is it a poor neighborhood? Where? Daddy? Who would like to game something like an everyday routine to these people? How many people are there? there? I'm going to look at the warm questions that I need. Nice. The trainer. Think about the ball is in the air. Can you see it? <laughs> because I was looking for the ball. <laughs> White streets. They don't seem dressed for work or do something manual, maybe. And I think, can we take a moment now? And, I, and obviously, we're not. I'm not embodying slow here because I, I want to make sure that I introduce you to as many ideas as possible. Um, but maybe people take a minute to think: Is there anything they feel that they can relate to or make a connection to their own experience or life from this picture? I think we had a, had a nice one earlier about kids playing in the street. Um, anything that you can see that they make a connection to? Something they already knew, their own lives. And so, it's like when I was young, I used to play in the street with my friends. I was in the street when I was small. Years ago, we could be in the street. Well, they are at least doing something fun together like kids used to do in the past. Are made out of nothing? Poverty scene in India. So, Paul, reality fans. In this full of cars, unable to play. Close mm -hmm. the Indian sport. Mm -hmm. They're practicing in a break from work. Picture that is reality. To play now, it is impossible. Sarah, apart from that type of game, the scene looks very similar to poor rest of our town where people play football in streets. I saw this kind of scene several times. I'm going to pause for the minute. We could, we have, in fact, run sessions where for an hour we've looked uh, at a piece of student work and really unpacked it. But I just wanted to give you a flavor of what it can look like to look with fresh eyes at a neighborhood. Um, the quest student, by the way, is incredibly common. We hear this all the time from students, either in what they post or in what they reflect after. To the fact for many young people it's like they are seeing a whole new place when they go out in the neighborhoods and actually stop and look at what's around them and, and with our prompts maybe look up or down or close in on something and the beauty of activities and learn being an online platform and social media is while you're going under a journey of discovery like alpha p in mumbai He's connected to kids around the world who are going through a similar process. And so kids uh, we have found to be, and I'm sure you found this too through eTwinning, are incredibly interested in other people's lives. And I think we saw this now it just in our quick um, run through here. There's a natural tendency, and I gave you a prompt as well, but to see, hmm, how is this similar to things that I know where kids are playing soccer in the street? What's different? You might 
And where I'm living, actually, people don't take the time to play street games anymore. Or it's kind of wholly unacceptable to shut down a road and, and play. So that, in a very micro sense, is some of what unfolds on our to be to learn. Sugar is a little bit. We find that young people were telling us privately um, that it's extremely meaningful for them to receive a comment from another student. A student will post to work and then other students can come in if they have their own account, come in and leave comments. How we were finding the comments to be a little bit thin. Um, I think this is a challenge for our times. On Facebook, for example, it's you know, people tend to put likes, they, they don't generally engage in very deep dialogue, as it were. And that you know, everything that happens on Out of Eden Learn is very deep meaningful and I think we would want it to be we would want there to be some natural banter and back and forth between students but we've developed something called a dialogue toolkit to give young people some prompts or suggestions on how they might carry on the conversation so they're based off of the thinking routines one of which we just tried now and which Progero has many if you want to explore that so I very much notice what stands out to you or catches your eye in this person's post. What do you notice in particular? So instead of saying, great, nice photo, what about it did you notice? And one, and which we've adapted actually from a teacher who collaborates with Out of Eden Learn, well posts with words in particular, copying and pasting simple functions on the computer, one phrase, and then saying more about it. It's a simple move, but we found it to really enrich um, the level of the, um, of the um, back and forth. And here's another one. What years did you, how were your thoughts extended? What was your new perspective? Example, and, and this is just, you know, uh, this was a slide that was already made. This is a of very simple back and forth between two students. A student from China who happens to be living in Brazil, the age in which we live, he introduces himself. This is our setting off um, footsteps or activity. Something about Paul. Somebody actually who happens to be from Salo too, I'm seeing. A question What's it like to live in China? What kind of repetitive and sometimes silly questions do foreigners like to ask you about? Would you venture yourself like Paul did, and why? Right. Just a simple little dialogue. Teams often mediate on behalf of um, the class. And here's um, one from Kiriaki, actually, who I, I think is on this call. So one group again in Sao Paulo said, you is very beautiful after an exchange. I like the cats. They're very, very cute. Your school, there's lots of nice details. We wish we could go to Greece and visit your school. It looks great. Have the bees gone? So there were wasps' nests or a bee's nest that Kiriaki's class had taken a picture of. And that's from Kiriaki's class where she'd help, um, had organized a discussion amongst the students. Thanks, nice comments. Your school also looks great. And the question that I was empty when we found it. Leabs and, and, and Kalos because we're all afraid of bees. And, and so adds, I also wish to visit Brazil because my grandmother lives there and her name is Jenelia. Right? So here's the case of the younger students, the teacher has to mediate. And I'm sure this is nothing new to you on e twinning because the very purpose of e twinning is to connect people. Back at this photograph here, and the student also taken this one you now to take a minute and just do this in your mind. We won't have time to share out because I want time for Q&A. But if you toolkit, just pick one of the icons and think to yourself, if I'm somebody seeing that photograph, it was the street scene in India, how much conversation about that? So I want you to read some of those. And think to yourself, what might I write in response to that question?
something in their mind, that would be good. And I'll show you some that people actually said on the platform. Justin from Sydney in Australia, where cricket, which is the sport, is a big thing. The photo is very interesting because it really shows me how much of an effect cricket has on the Indian culture, not only on the field, but how you play it whenever you get the opportunity. To say there in parentheses, one thing to guard against a bit on how to be and learn is that young people really like getting an authentic glimpse of, of what it's like in a different country. But sometimes, especially with younger students, they think that that's how everything is. And you can see a little bit in that comment there because he's assuming now that all, all Indians maybe are, are playing cricket whenever they get the chance. So I say that's an interesting challenge that we that we um, try and get against. And you'll see that you know students are quite creative in, in their avatars, which is a very interesting. There's such a cultural difference between Canada and India as shown through the pictures you uploaded. Like I said, that's another classmate. I've, I've just captured a few here. There will never be a barber operating on a street here, and also kids don't play cricket on the side street. That's a comment that one of one of us had said. Yes, yeah. they do play sport. It would be soccer most probably, but usually you don't see kids play too much on the side streets in my neighbourhood. Right? Compare experience to the other. And G from Boston um, straight in with a question. Do people always get haircuts on the side of the street? I find that very interesting. And we lose tone uh, somewhat on the internet. So, you know, you could see that maybe that's a little bit, whoa, haven't you got bar shops? But I think the just spirit of out of Eden Learn is that kids are very kind of generous, I think, in, in how they ask and how they interpret those questions. And the answers back, the kid who took the picture. This happens quite frequently around my neighborhood. However, the majority of people go to a salon or a barber shop. Right? And that's, that's kind of helpful and interesting so that JG doesn't now think, whoa, everybody in India gets their hair cut side. So I want to share that. And up to questions, and I'd also, I know there are people here who have used Out of Eden Learn, so I'd like them to have an opportunity um, if, they, if I'd like to share um, some highlights for them. I thought it'd be good to recap things from a very brief um, uh, introduction that I've given that you could do. So the first thing you can do, if you're interested, and we always welcome um, classes from, from countries um, in Europe, be to sign up one or more classes to participate in Out of Eden Learn. It's free. You sign up on our website. I think we'll be launching some new walking parties uh, later on in March. Um, then we may be looking at September because we have to kind of put kind of classes together. Um, very challenging when the school calendars around the year at different times. Uh, if somebody really wants to be keen and you're a middle school classroom, we actually do have some openings right now and you could be starting immediately. As I said before, I um, would invite you to go to our webpage, look at our curriculum and just try out some activities. Um, many of our activities are designed that you are very simple, like drop to walk and you don't need to be online to do them. So many teachers do these active activities just with their students, much to be learned just from comparing perspectives and experiences from students who are in one single classroom. And new is to look more closely at Paul Salopek's materials and we some of his materials, which are from really from interesting places of the world that your students probably don't know much about. Teaching. Some classes follow where Paul is. Um, his Instagram and Twitter feeds are really accessible. Um, I myself love to follow his Twitter account. Very, he'll have little comments, um, pictures, and you just get a sense of what is Paul seeing or doing as he's walking around the world. Paul well, and, and Kiriaki is, is, is amongst them have adapted our dialogue toolkit. Um, we're very interested here now in taking what we've created online and linked it to an analog or offline context. 
So like some of those moves that we've developed to get a good conversation going, you have to be online to try out some of those moves. Um, and in a, in a video that I'll, I'll um, get a link to in a moment, you can see how Kuriaki and her classes used post-it notes and other displays to help young people connect with other people to get a conversation going. I want to try out some Project Zero thinking routines, such as the one we just tried, you know, very cursorily now. Um, if you go to the Project Zero website, you can find those. What, what I want to, to, to say in closing is that I would urge you to carry on as I think you're doing and provide opportunities for the people in your care to exchange their stories with others and really develop a sense of curiosity or questioning about the world around us and the people who are bring different who are having different kinds of lives to their own. That's at the heart of what we're trying to do as educators here at Project Zero. Kindle that curiosity in a respectful way and have young people learn more about other people's cultures and their own at the same time. Which I this is one of my favourite quotes from a student in our Tibetan Learn. So that learning is out of the textbook. When now I'm in this classroom, there's a lot more connections without a vision to other people. And I think that's an important part about learning. My friend was saying how you can't just explore the world from a textbook. You have to go out and explore it yourself. And I can hear other people's perspectives of what we're trying to do. And then see um, in what we've got two beautiful videos. One by Kiriaki just came out last from about Kyriaki's practice in Greece just came out last week. They were sent so what does that of Eden Learn actually look like in a classroom? So I'd invite you and the links are in this in the slides that I'll share to look at those. And then I'll now open it up to Q and A but here are the links to the various components of our Eden Learn, our website, our Instagram, Twitter feed, etc. So um I do um, feel some questions for me. That that would be great. If people want to type in questions or comments. And um, Q, I know there are some other educators from Greece and maybe other participants I don't know about. If you could do um, anything about your experience so far, now would be you know a really nice time to do that. We'll do that before the questions. So if you want, then I can just unmute. Thank you. Uh, Kiriaki is willing, <laughs> that would be nice if Kiriaki just wants to say a few words about her, her experience, that'd be great. I hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, hello everyone. I am thrilled to hear Liz presenting this amazing community. This is actually my second year participating in Out of It and Learn. And uh, I have been very surprised with all these wonderful things that are happening to my students. And um, I would suggest everyone to participate in this wonderful community. And why don't you bring out of it and learn in it winning? Uh, both communities, I believe, share so many common characteristics. And by uh, incorporating the philosophy of out of it and learn, you can improve your twinning projects. Uh, you can see your neighborhood with friends. My, my young students became so thrilled by the little details they discovered that usually go unnoticed. So uh, I would suggest everyone, everyone now to participate in this wonderful community and you can see how, how you can boost your students' uh, motivation and um, how you can boost their participation to to such wonderful things that this community brings to us and our students. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I, I, I think Kiriaki is right, but there is. I think if you're interested in the training, I, I, I browse the website, I do see very good synergy. Um, we're worldwide, not just Europe. Um, so I think at this stage, anyway, it would make sense to sign up to Vision Learn and participate and weave that into the project that you're sharing through twinning because we we um we could do that but we wouldn't want to limit our 
working group just for people in you, a walking party to just European students, because some of the beauty of this is connecting with students in Asia, North America, elsewhere around the world. Uh, Liz, I can say that we are working in Europe, but uh, we are accepting people in our twin space. Of course, they can't have the things that e-twinners have, but they can actually take part in an e-twinning project. I mean, Mission had a project and I had a partner from USA uh, some years ago. Uh, so I suppose this can be feasible. Hmm. And I really believe, I mean, while I was listening to you and while you were describing all these things and how, you know, you see the neighborhood and everything in a different perspective, I have in mind, you know, the twinning project. So when they actually start a project, they introduce themselves and they start saying how the country looks like, where they live, how the school is. So I suppose all the things that you present here, we can in a different perspective, you know, analyze things more, look carefully. and really help on organizing even other activities when we do an e-twinning project. Uh, so I just have some questions that I was posting here so far. Uh, is it so simple for our students to en enroll in that platform? And if it's safe for students who are 11 to 12 years old, this is one question, I don't know. Oh, well, that's great. Actually, whenever I talk, I always miss out some information. Um, so we require the te it's a teacher who signs up first and creates a classroom and gives a special password to the students so that they can sign in. I just want to be clear, we, we don't really just have random students in there. If a student did want to sign up by themselves, we put them um, in a classroom. The thing that makes it safe um, is that students never share their real names. There are no photographs of students. So the very first footstep is they create a name for themselves, an avatar, which is not a picture of themselves. Um, we have a research project based at Harvard, um, and we're looking at effective ways to kind of build community and um, engage young people in the world. But this means that we have much stricter guidelines than the average kind of project that's happening online. So we, we don't even know the, the true identities of the students. Unless we we, we do um, interview some students, but we have to have special parental permission and a special agreement. So this is incredibly safe. I'm really proud of the community guidelines we've developed. We've had very very few instances of kids say, posting anything inappropriate. We have a flagging system where it is monitored every day here, where we can quickly act should something arise. Um, but really. Um, it's been quite stunning to me coming into this that it's a very safe community um, for young people. Yeah. Okay, another question is if uh, this is workable for students 16 to 17 years old. I don't know. Yeah. I mean. so we, um, now, honest, initially, um, and I've just, I wasn't sure, somebody wanted to annotate, I wasn't sure, so I apologize if I bumped you off. <laughs> um, um, Initially, was designed for high school and middle schoolers, and I have to say, it's creative educators um, with younger students who really adapted this for younger students. So some of our most um, interesting work comes from older students who I think are particularly primed to find out who I, where do I fit into the world, how does my life connect to other people, um, and that's actually my research background is looking in late teens and trying to cater to that very real need they have to figure out what lives are going to be and who they are. So, yes, we love you. Okay, this is the Abaddon Foundation who supports, supports it. What? Abs Foundation. So, the Abundance Foundation is a um, foundation based in California, and they the education piece of this. Um, they pay for us to do our work at Project Zero, for the platform, etc. Um, no Geographic and the Pulitzer Center and the Knight Foundation, various people pay for Paul to do his walk. That's a separate piece where he's working as a journalist. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to the Pulitzer Center, their education partners too. They don't have an online community like us, but they've got some tools that connect some of Paul's reporting to 
some current events. They've also done some work with the scout movement who are interested in in Port War. So quite a few of us are around, uh, around um, Port War, which I think is going to is um, a lot of international recognition, and I think is going to become a very famous kind of event. Really, this water run. The question is, if we, if we could create a neat winning project out of Eden Bay. Yeah, I think you could. You know, just done of what you said earlier, I think one way to do it would be to adapt our materials. Um, you know, we ask that you have um, a Creative Commons license, so we just ask that you cite us if you're taking our activity. Um, that you take our activities and build your own thing. I mean. Some teachers built entire curriculum around this. They participate in Out of Eden Learn, but they do many different things in their own classroom, and we try and share that out. Uh, could do that, or could enroll in Out of Eden Learn and then share about your experiences on e-learning. Because um, we have a very complicated web system and grouping people, we have to roll out the curriculum. You can do them a little bit separately if you're doing the full thing because we can't just upload the whole of our platform onto e twinnings. But I certainly think there are ways that with existing partners you can do that. Um, the other thing I mentioned is when you sign up, you can request to be put in the same party as people you're already connected with. And we see that a lot. So we might in other people, but you could stick with somebody that you're working with already and um, have that be part of your experience. Um, we're not asking you to jump off each wing and come to us. I think the two could be very um, compatible. Yeah, that's great. I don't know if there are questions because there were some, but you have already answered them about the students. Yeah, and if it's, I don't know if you have anything to else. I mean, I'm just checking. Because I just have, you know, comments like that is a perfect way of working critical thinking and encourage students to become active and creative. And many thank yous, I see there. No, I can't see anything else. Well, I'd be very happy to um, share the um, slideshow with you, which has the links in it, if, if, if you want to go back. Um, there's many aspects to actually, and then I haven't even touched on our research. But um, in case you didn't see that, um, see enthusiasm for it. Um, those of us here at Project Zero, and, and there's a small team of us here, um, we love working on this. It's just such gratifying work to see the fantastic work that teachers and students are doing. And as I said, I do think it's really important that we create these opportunities for young people to slow down and connect with us. Be a good place to stop. Um, that we share quite a lot of things together because we also, I, I really believe that our retweeners, we are, you know, very passionate of working with students and doing with them and extra and, you know, all these things, working all together around Europe. And I think so, we have things in common on that way. So, yeah, keep up, yeah, let's keep up the conversation going. And yeah, again, apologies, Shea couldn't make it, but she as well can be a point person and back in touch. She, she is really fantastic and very enthusiastic about having some relationship with each other. Okay. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was really inspiring, really. Thank you very much for that. And you are going to have the recording because you asked, so I'm going to upload it and please will send and actually, if you wouldn't mind, us, could we share that video with people outside e twinning Is that possible? Yes, there's no problem with that. We have a YouTube channel, so I'm going to share all, all everything with you, okay? Right. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Thanks for participating. Thank you. So evening call.